What's up everyone? This is G the Hyper Sapien and in this video it's a collaboration with two other YouTubers. So Steve from Who Took My Dice and Mephos from Frost and Fist wanted to do a march for McCrag. Now I wanted to get in on that march for McCrag, but me being a bit of an orky dork, I wanted to orc it up a little bit. So we're gonna wah for McCrag. Crag, 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 Crag. It's, it's just going to be a bit of a fun video. Basically, the main idea of the challenge or the collaboration is to paint something blue. Now, I do have something that I wanted to paint blue. So, I'm going to do my War Boss Steve in the Ultra Orc style. The Orc was basically just smashed together with a bit of super glue. And, obviously, I threw a lick of paint on it. A little bit more than a lick of paint. There was a lot of blue paint that went onto this miniature. But I hope you enjoyed this bit of a collaboration I did with Steve and Mephos. And go check out their channels and go check out their videos for March for McCrag. So I'll leave their channels in the description box below. Please go check them out. Give them some subs. Give them some likes and all of that jazz. Okay, so I've sprayed the War Boss in McCrag blue undercoat but you can basically use a white or a black undercoat. So I will be using Citadel paints for this war boss, all different blues. I'm gonna be obviously using the Crag, which is basically their Ultramarines blue, but you can use any blue from any paint range that you prefer. You're gonna obviously have slightly different results. Okay, also I've started the base. It's basically finished really. I did do that on Frost and Fist live stream that I was on. So for something to do, you know, I was working on my March for McCrag Orc War Boss. So I just did the, you know, base there. And on this video, I'll be really doing the blue armor. Also, just to make it easier, I do have the arm or, you know, the big chopper that he has separate. And I'll be painting that to the side. So the first step after basically base coating or undercoating your blue you're going to want to use a wash just to add a lot of shade. So I'm just going to do an all over wash with Drakenov Nightshade. I'm just going to slap it all over the war boss. Slap all of this ink or shade or wash or whatever you want to call it all over the war boss. So I am using a medium Citadel shade brush, but you can use any brush that has a big belly that holds a lot of this shade and just Basically, just slap it all over, you know, just slap it on all around his groin, you know, all over this war boss. You just want to really feel all those details and, you know, once it's dry, it's all going to pop. But just go around and just do the whole model, all of the blue area. So all over his face. I am going to do the face green. I don't really do much of it on camera. But I just, you know, I'm going to do a green face, but it doesn't really matter if we get some wash there. And even over the areas, I'm going to do metal. You know, you can go around and you can just slap this on. Just a nice quick step. Okay, so I thought I'd just show you how I, you know, wick away some of the excess. So you want to just smother the model in this shade, but you do want to make sure that it doesn't gather in the recesses. We call it pooling. You don't want it to pull in areas so you know you can just go around and any that's on your brush that's left over you can just wipe on a piece of paper towel just helps you know you can obviously move the paint around but sometimes it will gather in those recesses in those details okay so i've got different blues here on my wet palette ready to go Okay, so I've got Calgore Blue here, I've got McCrag Blue, and also I have Cantor Blue. Cantor and McCrag are pretty close, I didn't know they were so close, so I might sort of mix them together a little bit and just see what blue I can come up with. So Calgore Blue will be our highlight colour, or we might mix a little bit of that into different areas. And we have Night Lord's Blue, or a very dark blue here for our shadow areas. Later on, I do add a little bit of purple into the shadow area, but I'll show you when that comes. 
Okay, so now our model is all dry from the shade. We're just gonna go around with Cantor Blue and we're gonna just start to layer up. So go around on all these raised areas and just start adding our color. And we want to leave the wash or the shade in the recesses, of course. So in the shadow area, try to avoid that. It's not too important. If you do get a little bit in there, we can come and fix that up with our dark blue or our dark purple later on. But you can see when I'm layering this up, I'm just avoiding those shadow areas, those recesses. It's just gonna help the armor separate and just help each panel on the armor pop. So there is obviously a lot of blue on this model. So it took ages to go around. Now there is a few dents on the armor, which I'm gonna try and avoid, but we can again come back in with our shade, our darkest blue color and just fill in all those gaps. So we do, you know, add the dark blue later on. And I do even add a little bit of Abaddon, 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 Abba, Abba Black in those areas, you know, just to really make them look like they're really dark. And we could weather this up if we really wanted, but I was running out of time. So, you know, I didn't really have time to go around and do some rust and all that stuff. But I am quite happy with the result in the end. So we're going to leave in the collar area and under his jaw, mostly the dark. Speaking of jaw, we're going to obviously hit this jaw with the blue colors and on top of the head. Now I do add some cow gore into some of these areas, like I did with the shoulder. I added some cow gore because from the Xenophil or top down where the sun's gonna be, you know, these areas are definitely gonna be hidden. So I didn't really have time to do anything too fancy, wet blending and stuff. But I do a little bit of wet blending or just, you know, add some of that cow gore into it in these areas. So definitely on top of the head. I want a bit of the Calgore mixed in with the McRag or the Cantor or the McRag Cantor mix. You know, we're just trying to have a bit of fun with this model. It's a bit of a challenge or a bit of a community project that I'm doing with some other guys. So yeah, just, you know, having a bit of fun. I was getting a bit stressed because I was running out of time because yeah, this, this blue did take a quite a long time. I'm used to painting green, green skin. I'm not really used to painting blue armor, so forgive me. But I do the same here. You know, I put a bit of the Cantor down or the McCrag, and then I get, while it's still wet, a little bit of the cow gore, and we can, we want to try and push this upwards, so push the lightest color upwards. Now, I don't do the best job here, you know, as I said, I'm having a bit of fun, but I do come back with the Cantor or McCrag, and then down near the bottom, I add a little bit more of that and then sort of just blend them together a bit. But you know, if I wanted this to be perfect or, you know, I'd take my time more and we'd really wet blend and really get a better effect. But you know, we're just having fun here. We're painting blue armor. We're painting lots of blue. But yeah, you want to try to pull the dark color downwards and add the lighter color and pull it upwards. It's kind of what we're doing. Okay, so this is still an orc, even though I'm meant to be just, you know, painting blue, really. This ultra orc. I do go around with Caliban green. So he does have a bit of green in his underarm area and obviously his face. Now, I don't really show it, but later on I do add flash skits yellow to this just to add a highlight. So I have gone around with our darkest blue, the Night Lords, whatever it's called. <laughs> and... I just started putting in all the recesses so we did have the shade there just, but you know when you're layering up you might just you know make a bit of a mess of the model so we're going around and we're just going to put in all the shadow areas our night lords blue so in all the recesses and just some of the panels under here so you can see that i've started adding it there I'm just trying not to make this video too long, but I am going to go around and add the cow gore for some edge highlights and just, you know, little places that I feel like 
need that brighter blue to help it pop. Some of these rivets, some of the smaller ones, the bigger rivets I come in and I do a metal on them later. But you know, lots of areas that I feel like the cow gore needs to be, I'll come in and do that. It's mainly around the edges, especially on the jaw piece here. You know, we want that to stand out. So we're going to go around and we're going to do a bit of an edge highlight. But yeah, as I said, there's lots of blue on this. So I do a lot of it off camera. But yeah, I'm just showing you sort of the basic tricks of the trade. I'm showing you just, you know, how I achieved what I did with the model. Now I don't go around, I sort of run out of time, you know, like, so I don't do probably every edge with a highlight, but the main ones, especially at the front, especially towards the face, and just to separate these panels, you know, painting blue so much, it's almost like I'm getting seasick, it's just so much blue on this model. It was definitely fun to do, but yeah, you know, I don't paint this much blue, so I feel for you Ultramarines players that just spend your life, you know, just painting blue. Now this is when I start to incorporate a bit of purple, and that's probably because of that blue fatigue I was just talking about. So what I basically do is add some of that Nagaroth Knight into our Night Lord's blue, and I sort of you know make it so it's not exactly purple but it's not exactly blue but yeah just mix them together probably about half and half now i come back in and i just add this to the areas that i feel you know really needs that bit of purple or purple blue blurple but yeah i feel like this really helped to uh, add a bit of interest to the model just having that slight sort of purpley blue tinge was quite nice Shout out to Chapter Master James for, you know, suggesting to add some purple to this. So I'm going to do all the highlights and the rest of the shadow area off camera. But one more part that I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of those checkers with white paint. Now I found that Pro Acryl white, titanium white is really good. You know, it goes over so smooth and looks so good without having to build up from like a dark gray or a medium gray it just goes on really smooth really nicely straight away so that's just going to be on all of the checkers and as you see later on it really helps to separate the blue armor and just give it a bit of visual interest and also it's a little bit of a nod to the old retro you know like sort of second edition third edition 40k where checkers were everywhere now it is a bit of a cheat because these checkers are sculpted in you know i have done checkers before but you know it would take a lot longer for me to get them right with the brush but yeah you know who doesn't love sculpted details let me know in the comments below if you like sculpted details but yeah these checkers are sculpted on obviously and it just it's really easy to do really I'm just running my brush all over them just to pick out those checkers so I've gone around with black and I put it in the undersuit I've also done it on all of these rivets I've done it on the cables and I've also added a dark brown so the paints I'm using is Abaddon black and I'm using Rhinox Hide, which is a dark brown. So this is setting me up for the metals. I've done the dark brown on the belt. I've done the dark brown here. I decided to break up the armor and I'm gonna do this gold kind of to represent Space Marines, how they have the trim. So yeah, I'm gonna do silver on top of these rivets or these studs here. And I'm gonna build this up with a gray I've jumped a few steps just so we can get this model done. Also, I've been painting the skin. So he has a bit of skin under the arms, also obviously on his face. All I did is base coated it all with Caliban green or a dark green you can use. And I've slowly been adding some flash skits to that dark green, which flash skits is a bright yellow. So I've just been adding a bit more yellow each time just to sort of, you know, build up that just nice and quickly. 
Normally I'd paint the orcs a little bit more realistic, but I just thought the more bright green will just help this green pop against the blue scheme we've done. Obviously I've gone around and I've done all of these checkers. Really with this model I'm having a lot of fun, so I could just spend hours and hours, you know, adding lots of detail, but I've gone around and added a fair few highlights. But we're going to go around and we're going to paint gold on the brown. We're going to paint silver on these parts, basically the studs. And with the hoses, we're going to do the same as we do to the inner sort of armor here. We're just going to add some gray. So I'm going to start with a dark gray and just build up to like, you know, a light gray. So the colors I'm going to work on the black areas, I'm going to just do Mechanica standard gray, which is sort of a mid medium toned gray and then i'm going to add dawnstone which is sort of more towards a light gray color the gold i'm using is retributor gold and i'll just do like a silver on these and then maybe even add a little bit of chrome on the end but i'll show you on the shoulder pads on the belt it's going to take a little bit more time just getting that right and yeah all these pieces so we're just going to obviously go around here with the gold on the belt here if you can see it and then when it comes to these parts this sort of batman looking belt we're just going to leave the dark in the shadows this area can just all be painted gold now you know if we was taking our time or if we was you know trying to really make this model as best as we could We'd probably come round with like maybe a silver, go around the edges with it. Now I've added a few edge highlights, but we're not going too crazy. I just want to get this model done for the collaboration that I'm taking part in. And just get a video out. Obviously this part's going to be gold as well, this little part around his head. I just thought I'd do this gold just to help draw the attention towards the face instead of doing it silver. The gold will help draw your eye towards the center of the model. But yeah, we'll go around and do that, and then I'll come back and do the silver. And because these are small details, I'll go down to a smaller brush, a triple zero. And yeah, we're just going to go over these rivets or these studs here. You know, we're going to find any other areas that we want a bit of silver. So just these pipes coming up here. Okay, so this is what the model looks like when it's got the silver done and the gold done. It's starting to look like an ultramarine, I mean an ultra orc now. But I'm going to go around with a sepia wash and go over the gold. And then I'm going to go over all the silver with a black wash. Also, I did end up doing these little parts on the backpack silver. I did a brown over the wraps, a Mornfang brown. And then I gave them a quick wash over with sepia. I'm going to add some of the silver on here as well. Silver around these bits here. Almost time to stick this on. I'm just going to finish these wraps off. So I'm going to pick them out with a bone sort of color. Like a sandry dust or you know, like a beige color. I'll just go around and try and leave in the recesses. The dark brown and just a little bit of the light brown or beige on top. But what I'm going to do is just, you know, pick out basically the raised areas of these, you know, this inner armor has got a bit of a texture on it. And the dog, for some reason, is licking the wall behind me. Oi. Oi. And then when it comes to these areas, obviously it's kind of like a ribbed piping or ribbed tubing. So all of these sort of raised areas, I'm going to try and pick them. Now that's going to take a lot of time. I'm probably going to need my binoculars. I mean my magnifiers on just to be able to see them so I'll probably do that off camera yeah and um, as I said there's a little bit of spill of some of this the metallics and you know I'm getting to the point where I'm trying to speed through this just to get the video out I'll finish off the axe stick that on do all of these washes and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at what we got just gonna fix up any other areas and really I could spend you know weeks years on this if I wanted to but just to get the video and the collaboration done I think we're pretty close to being done really also I have been doing the base 
there's my war boss Steve. I hope you enjoyed the video. If there is anything that was a bit confusing and you want to ask me, make sure you leave a comment in the description box below. I'll happily help you along your way. If there's anything that you want to see me do a little bit slower, I could do a future video for you on that topic. You know, maybe the base, if anyone's interested in seeing how I did the bases. They're pretty quick and easy. You know, you just need the right materials really to get the right result. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you could please like, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. This is G, the Hyper Sapien, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.